inside the BTMS Insiders uh, Facebook group, which by the way, that's a super cool benefit of membership. Not only do you get instant streaming access to over 140 hours of copywriting and marketing training that I've put together for you, you also get access to this Facebook group where you can actually answer questions and I'll answer them publicly for you know members of the group to see and learn from. And, and it's all included with the BTMS Insiders All Access Pass. So anyways, inside the group, I had a member that was asking about uh, having trouble with scaling a certain funnel. So he'd worked on this funnel and was able to scale it to about, well, was able to scale it to a certain amount per day um, and was able to just invest this traffic and it was profitable, invest in this traffic, it was profitable. But then as soon as they tried to scale it a little bit bigger, as soon as they tried to scale it beyond that, they kept running into this issue where just the profitability just tanked, where the, the funnel was no longer scalable beyond this certain daily amount. And I asked a couple questions and very quickly I was able to pinpoint like, is this what's going on? And he said, yeah, that's exactly what's going on. And it's all about the Eugene Schwartz market awareness model. And so today I'm going to talk about creating funnels and advertisements that scale using the Eugene Schwartz market awareness model to help you understand where your messages need to go. So that's what we're going to cover in today's episode. These are the proven direct response marketing, copywriting, and entrepreneurship success strategies you can use today to write your own ticket and create the life you want. I am Roy Furr, and this is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Now, here's today's breakthrough. So before we actually get into this, I will say that like, this is why acquisition copywriters and marketers, people who understand how to acquire customers from cold traffic, from people who don't know you, that's why we get the big bucks. That's why our, our fees are high. That's why our royalties are high. Because when you are suddenly able to tap into 10 times the traffic or whatever and bring all these new customers in the door, like that is, that's wildly valuable for a business. So understanding the difference between what works when you're selling to a captive audience, like people who already know, like, and trust you, your email list, your prospect list, your customer list, selling to those people is relatively easy. Selling to a cold audience of anybody that may have some kind of relevant interest in your topic, that becomes much harder. And it really, it really is all about this market awareness model, which is uh, championed by Eugene Schwartz in Breakthrough Advertising. So I actually use I use uh, Keith Krantz's uh, Keith Krantz's language for this because I really like it, um, and and it to me delineates what what we're looking at for each step of the market awareness model. Um, but it's, it's again, all based on Eugene Schwartz, Market Awareness in Breakthrough Advertising, which is a fantastic book. Um, so the market awareness model, all markets and all prospects within a market go through these five stages. They start with being unaware of uh, you know, your product, your service, actually the problem that's being solved, any kind of solution to the problem. It's just they're unaware, but maybe they start to experience some symptoms. Right? So the market or the person is completely unaware of what's going on. And then they start to experience these symptoms and they become aware that there is a problem that needs to be solved. There's a problem, there's an unfulfilled desire or some kind of problem that needs to be solved. Then once they're aware, like once, once they become aware that, oh, there's this problem, I wanna have it solved, they start to look for solutions. And so they go from unaware to problem aware to solution aware, meaning that they've looked and they've found that there are maybe some different solutions available. And it could be products, it could be services, it could be some kind of like direct work, it could be um, some do-it-yourself something. Like, you know, depending on, depending on what the market is, there's all sorts of different um, you know, uh, different different things that you consider can consider for what that solution might look like. But basically, it's, hey, I'm not aware that there's even a problem here. I'm aware that there's a problem here. I'm aware that there is a potential solution to the problem. And then as they're researching solutions, they become you aware. Um, so we're U-P-S-Y, you aware, 
meaning they have found your specific solution, they found your specific business, your specific offering, you have a product, a service, whatever, and they start to do research on specifically you as a potentially viable solution to the problem. And then they become deal ready, that's D. So upside, U-P-S-Y-D. Um, we went unaware, problem aware, solution aware, you aware, and then deal ready. And that deal ready is basically, hey, they've basically decided that they're going to get what you're offering. They just need a reason to take action now. Okay, so you take something like a, you take something like a sale, right? Like where it's just like a 50% a, a off sale or something like that. Basically, that is targeted at the deal ready. You know, somebody has to be has to be aware of you and your particular solution and be ready to buy. And just having a 50% off sale, that's just for people who are deal ready, who haven't taken action yet. OK, um, then you get a little bit more. Um, you you zoom out a little bit, and and by the way, that's the smallest segment of any market. That is that is a little tiny segment of any market. Those are the people who are already on your prospect list, already a hot lead, already maybe even on your customer list, and just ready for the next product, the next service, the next offer, the next deal. So you zoom out a little bit, and you are talking to the people who are becoming you aware. Well, the way to move those people closer to the sale is to actually give your like give a reason why your product your service your offer is superior to any other solution that's out there so at this point if they're becoming you aware they are already aware of the different solutions in the marketplace so you need to differentiate your solution as superior and this often is where like the most novice marketers focus their their uh, their marketing, their, their copywriting, their messaging, is they say, hey, we are better than the competition. And here's all the ways that we're better than the competition. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that's not that scalable because somebody has to already be aware of all the solutions in the marketplace, much less being problem aware, before they can even start to consider, okay, why is this solution superior, right? And before that message even matters to them. So when you get a little bit better as a marketer, then you start to help people define what an ideal solution looks like. You start to give them buying criteria for an ideal solution. And here is where you're actually assisting them in the buying process, in the research process. And obviously the way that you're gonna set it up is it, because you believe in your product is the superior solution, you're gonna say, here's some of, the, some of the different solution options. Here's what a good solution needs to do for you. And here is why, here's how our solution lines up with what a good solution needs to be. And so you're gonna walk them through from, from um, becoming solution aware and comparing the solutions to deciding that yours is superior to offering them some kind of reason to take action now. So again, we're like, we're going from the most aware and we're zooming out. Now, most copywriters stop there. And if you're having trouble scaling your particular product or service, it's probably because if you're having trouble scaling your offer, your funnel, it's probably because you're speaking to the, the solution aware prospects or the you aware prospects. You are maybe helping them make decisions about which solutions are superior and differentiating your product or service as the superior solution. But that assumes that they show up like with a full understanding of the problem and what type of solution that they're looking for, right? And that, that tends to be where you struggle um, with getting much scale, even if you're able to get the warmest traffic or the most targeted traffic to work really well. So if you're able to get this, this warm traffic to work really well, but you're not able to get cold traffic well, what might be going on is you are speaking specifically to the people who are solution aware, like or who are becoming solution aware, who are going through the research process to become solution aware. Like, for example, like if, if I want to buy a new, I, I produce some music on my computer, and if I wanted to buy a new MIDI keyboard, it's like I want, like, I'm going to start looking at which MIDI keyboards have which features and how those are going to work with how I produce music and which one's going to be superior for me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there, I'm already looking at the solution, right? I'm already looking at the solution. 
versus if we zoom out a little bit from there, okay, so before someone can become solution aware, before someone can really dive into the different solutions that are available in a marketplace, they have to clearly define the problem. They have to define, okay, here's the problem that I want to have solved. Um, and the problem that I want to have solved may be, if, I, if I'm continuing with this MIDI keyboard example, maybe I want to make really interesting music, right? And that's a bigger problem than just I need a MIDI keyboard. I want to make interesting human feeling music that's like not just programmed in by clicking my mouse, right? Um, and so there could be a completely different solution available that's not a MIDI keyboard. It could be new software that allows me to hum music into my microphone. And what it does is it like pulls out the note data from that and then it creates recommended um, harmonies, etc., from that. And it turns me humming into my microphone into compelling music. And if, if I was just selling that MIDI keyboard, okay, maybe I'm gonna focus on, on that and I'm gonna focus on make better music by having a MIDI keyboard that gives you access to all these things within your music production software, etc. But if I want to speak to the problem aware people, I'm going to say something, I'm gonna say like how to make the most interesting music in the world or like, um, uh, so you're ready to become an electronic musician. Um, how do you get your ideas out of your head? And then you help them define this problem of like, the problem is you need to get all those musical ideas out of your head and into your music production software. And, and the automatic default for that is, oh, you need this keyboard, right? Uh, but maybe that's not the best solution for every, like if you know how to play piano, if you know how to play a keyboard, yeah, that's a great solution for you. But if you don't know how to do that, how can you, how can you change that messaging so you help them define the problem better such that it connects them to, okay, one particular solution is a keyboard, but if you're not great about that, what do you do? Like one particular solution is, is clicking your mouse, but if that doesn't feel human enough for you, what do you do? Well, we created the software that allows you to do this, right? And so you, instead of focusing on the solution where people are already like looking for the solution, which is a much smaller market, you're able to speak to this, this bigger market of, hey, you want to create awesome music that people are just like, wow, like where'd you learn to play like that? But you don't really know how to play? Here's your solution, right? And you're able to help them define that problem and then walk through defining the solution, comparing it to alternative solutions, it, presenting you and your offer, and then offering them a deal on that. And if you want to go even further, um, which becomes much more difficult, you can start to speak to the unaware. Now, I don't necessarily know what all the symptoms are of someone who is then going to want to use this software for getting, uh, for getting music out of their head, but maybe it's, um, you know, do you, do you enjoy listening to music and you're curious about how you could make it, even if you don't have any musical training at all? Well, our, you know, we help you do that. Right. And so it's it's about going further back, because if you think about this, if you think about the size of the markets, if you're able to get the getting musical ideas out of your head um, nailed down as far as the messaging, that's a bigger market than I'm shopping for MIDI keyboards. If you're able to go into, hey, I want to become a, a musician that makes awesome music, that's an even bigger market than the people who are already thinking, how can I get the musical ideas out of my head even better, right? And that's moving backwards on the awareness spectrum. It's moving towards more unaware markets. The key there is all in the messaging. How can you speak to these different segments of the market based on their awareness and then walk them through this market awareness spectrum in your copy? So if you start an unaware, you are gonna have to help them define the problem you're gonna to have to help them identify solutions and compare solutions. You're gonna to have to make them aware of why your solution is ideal. And, and then you're gonna to have to offer them some reason to act now, some deal. If you start at problem aware, uh, then you're gonna to have to speak to the different solutions that are available and then why yours is superior and offer them a deal. If you start at solution aware, then you 
you know, walk through the, 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 the market awareness spectrum from there. And so if you want to create something scalable, you say, okay, how can we go one step further back on the market awareness model? If, if everything that we're doing is about a deal, how can we make it about our offer being superior? If everything that we're doing is about our offer being superior, how can we educate people better about the different offers that are in the marketplace and speak to that leading to our offer being superior. If we're already talking about that, if we're already educating about that, how can we help people define the problem so that they're more proactively looking for a solution? And then if, if we are doing that pretty well, then maybe there are opportunities in speaking to a much more unaware market. And so you want to move backwards, move towards the less aware part of the awareness spectrum if you want to make your funnels, your ads more scalable. Now, one cool thing about this is that you don't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to retool your funnel, your ads, your whatever from the ground up. Um, if you think about your funnel as a series of steps, if you think about your ads, your acquisition system as a series of steps, what you need to do is just make sure that you are taking people through those steps based on where you catch their attention first. And so you may have great copy that converts people who are comparing solutions and that, that presents yours as superior and offers them a deal. You may have a great conversion system for that. So the question is, how can you use ads or advertorial pages or content marketing or whatever to tack on the front of that? So you get them up to the point where they want to compare solutions and then your call to action is compare the solutions for this. And so you may have a as something that, that helps really clarify the problem in someone's mind and connect them to, and here is the solution options available to you. And so you can create individual ads that become much more scalable to different segments of cold traffic based on going further back, not with your entire funnel, but going further back on the awareness spectrum based on um, the start of that ad, just making sure that if you follow the user path through the funnel, that it takes them from wherever you started all the way through the rest of the upside, uh, you know, unaware, problem aware, solution aware, you aware, deal ready, to the point where they are ready to take action. So if you found this valuable, and you'd like to be able to ask your own questions inside the BTMS Insiders Facebook group, and you'd like to dive into my 140 plus hours of content that's based on the same type of marketing and copywriting thinking, I'll include a link in the description to BTMS Insiders. It's like Netflix, but for copywriting and marketing training. So you pay one low fee, you get access to everything, including that Facebook group and all the training and in new content as it's added, et cetera, as long as you maintain your membership. So I'm Roy Fur. This is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Again, check out the links in the description. Also, leave a comment with this episode. Let me know on a scale of one to 10, how valuable do you find it and why? What are your action items? What are your takeaways? How is it having you rethink your funnel so that you can create messages Messages that are more scalable. Also tap that like button before you go if you like the message, if you like Eugene Schwartz, Breakthrough Advertising, the Market Awareness Model, or if you just want to create more funnels that scale. Again, tap that like button before you go so you get more content like this delivered to you. And so the magical algorithms of the internet will share it with more people who will find it valuable. You can share it directly and subscribe before you go. You can subscribe here. You can also go to BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com. Link is in the description. Sign up for my daily emails Monday through Friday, including episode notifications and more exclusive content for email subscribers. I'm Roy Fur. Again, this is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Always aim for 10 out of 10 value. I hope I've delivered it here and I will catch you soon with your next episode. See you soon. Bye. Thank you once again for tuning in to this daily episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Remember, check out the links with this episode for even more value. Now make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and engage in every way you can to keep this show going and growing and delivering daily value to you. I'll catch you soon for your next big breakthrough.